So in this program, what we want to do is we want to read how many numbers <coughs> the user uh, wants to enter. We don't know exactly how many numbers are there. That means every time that we run the program, we may end up with reading different uh, number of numbers. And uh, since we don't know how many times we want to do this, we want to read numbers, we need a while loop. All we know is the last number is zero. And the program at the end needs to basically print how many numbers excluding zero has been entered by the user. So, first thing that we need to do is to initialize our counter because we need to count. And uh, we can initialize by counter either by 0 or by 1. But in this case, initializing counter by, by 1 is wrong because maybe there is no number. That means the first number that the user enters is 0. That, that indicates the end of the number strings that the user intended to basically enter. That, and as a result, we need to print 0. If you, end, if you initialize counter by 1 in this example, and the user enters only 0, then uh, your program prints 1, and that is incorrect. But in other cases, you, s you may end up initializing your counter by 1 or any other number. It, depends on uh, the logic and the problem statement of your exercise. So let's initialize our counter by zero. Next thing that we need to do is to read the first number because our loop condition checks basically that number that the user enters is not zero. So once we get before we get to that loop condition that variable that uh, user input data, that user input number, has needs to have some value. And we can just set some random uh, values for that, uh, for that initial, uh, in, for that initial uh, number because uh, that random number that you select may not actually be included in the user's entered data. So basically we need to first to read the first number. Uh, we don't know whether we are reading integer or float, so, so just to be safe, we're going to read float. We need to use typecasting. Now we can put number, we can check uh, basically the loop condition, the number that the user entered. And in here, its number is not zero. So don't forget, this is not equal operator. Then, if the number is not zero inside the loop, we add one to our counter. And then we need to read to read the next number. <coughs> So this loop keep, keeps reading and counting until the user enters zero. Once user enters zero, we know that's the end of the input strings. So we exit the loop and then we print the counter with a nice message. You have entered numbers. Let's give it a try. So the first number, let's say, just some random numbers, and the last number is zero, so we have entered three numbers. Let's run it again. If, I, if I, my first number is zero, that means I haven't entered any number. The, the program should, end, should print, you have entered zero number, and that's correct. Now, 
we can merge this reading operation inside the loop condition as a loop condition. Just let me show it to you. Let me copy it here, paste it here, take two. You can just say like this. And we don't need it here, we don't need it here. So in this case, this is going to work. Basically, we are reading the number inside the loop without storing it because in this program we actually don't need to store the user's numbers whatever the user enters we don't need to store it we just need to count them but if we needed to also store the number in order for for example to process them in the loop then we definitely needed the first solution let's give it a try nine six four seven zero you can see the second solution also works we basically just read a number inside the loop condition and then checks if it's zero or not if it's zero we just exit the loop otherwise we keep counting and we're not storing users enter the the the, the data that the user enters again for this example, we don't need it to do anything with the number, with the data that the user entered in our program. So this solution works. If you want, if we need to do something with, with the data that the, that the user enters, then we have to use the first solution and actually store the user's data inside a variable.